Hello students, today we will discuss about past tense. In our last class, we have talked about the present tense. So, today we will talk about the past tense. So, what is past tense? Past tense refers to that time which has already passed. That means the time which is over. So, which has we have left behind. So, such a time is regarded as past tense. So, any work that we do or that we have done or that we did in that time is regarded as past tense. Now, past tense has four components. Let's start the first one. Past Indefinite. This is also regarded as simple past tense. Now, the question is when do we use past indefinite tense? Past indefinite tense is used when we simply or generally state about any incident that had taken place in the past. We know that that past time is very long from the moment that is just over, from that time till as far beyond back we go, it's past time or past tense. So it is a very long time, a very long period. Now, when we talk about any incident generally which has taken place in that phase of time, is regarded as past indefinite tense. Let's take the formation of past indefinite tense. Subject plus B2 plus object plus complement. This is the formation of the assertive sentence that we state in past. Now see, when we talked about present indefinite tense, this was V1 or V5. The moment we change it into past indefinite, it gets changed into V2. That is, V2 means the second form of the root verb. Let's cite an example in support of this formation. Raj went to school. Yesterday. So Raj went to school yesterday. Here, look at the word went. This is the V2. That is the second form of the verb go. The root verb is go. So the second form is of go verb is went. So here Raj is the subject, went is the verb, that is V2, and these are the complements, as object is not there in the sentence. Now let me give you one more example. Raj liked chocolate in his childhood. So Raj liked chocolate in his childhood. Here liked is the V2. Raj is the subject. Raj liked what? Chocolate. So chocolate is the object. And in his childhood is the complement in this sentence. So this is how the past indefinite tense happens. Now this is the assertive sentence. Now, if we have to make the interrogative sentence of this, then what have to, we have to do? We have to bring a helping verb. A helping verb in front of the subject. Or else, it can begin with WH also. If it begins with WH, then at first comes the WH word, then comes the helping verb, then comes the subject, then the main verb. In this pattern, it remains. Uh, of course, there may not be object or some other things may be missing over there. Now, coming to the negative sentence, when we do negative sentence, that time what happens? There should be an inclusion of not in between. And not, not will come. Now, when not will come, keep in mind, not cannot come alone. With it comes the helping verb. Did. Did is the past form of do. So did comes like Raj went to the school yesterday. If I make it negative, what I will do? Raj did not. So Raj not went to school yesterday is wrong. So I have to write Raj did not. Now when, when I use did, because I use did, so I will not use the second form here. Then what will I use of the root verb? Go. I did not go to school. Similarly, light. Here also what I will write. Raj did not like. Did not like. Now while the main verbs 
are remaining as it is because the word did did is helping us to denote the tense past tense past indefinite that's why we are not required to use the um, be do of the main verb it's not required so keep in mind wherever whenever you use did you are not required to use the be do of the main verb you can use the root verb that is the v1 i hope this is clear now moving on to the next past continuous past continuous tense now what is past continuous tense as we talked in the present continuous tense the action that is going on at moment at the moment of speaking that is present continuous now when come to past continuous what happens any action which went on for some time for a very short period of time in past i'm repeating my point any action that went on for a very short period of time in past such kind of actions are denoted in past continuous tense now coming to the formation subject plus was where plus v4 plus object plus complement now see when we talked about present continuous tense there also all the things were there v4 was also there because it denotes continuation only the changes helping verb was where in place of was where there we used amiza here we are using was where so was where is the past form of amiza or you can say it is the a past form a be verb the past tense of be verb is was where so let's come to the example the similar kind of examples we can cite again raj was going to school yesterday raj was going to school yesterday so this is the sentence that is being formed so this is was where helping verb was where and this is v4 that means v4 is the derivative of v1 plus ing when we add ing with v1 we get v4 so this is the one now uh, if we make negative of it then we are not required to use did over here we don't need to use did because we already have a helping verb so only inclusion of not is enough raj was not going to school yesterday now if i make it interrogative then what will happen was will come over here was raj not going to school yesterday so was will move at first or uh, if i don't make it negative interrogative then i will remove not was raj going to school yesterday question mark that is uh, this is how we will begin in make interrogative so i hope you understood past continuous next focus is on past perfect tense past perfect tense now what is past perfect tense past perfect tense now past is a very long time so in past when we talk about two actions suppose action a and action b suppose two action has taken place in the past time action a and action b now suppose action a happened first and then happened action b so what we'll do if we have to refer to both the actions together in the same sentence or at the same time then we will use past perfect tense to denote the action that happened first and we'll use simple past to denote the action that happened later now coming to the formation the formation that we have is subject plus had plus v3 plus object this is the formation of past perfect tense now let's see some example the doctor came after the patient had died see two parts 
doctor came and the patient had died. Now, which action happened first? This, the patient died, that action happened first. So, as this action happened first, I refer this in past perfect tense. And this action happened next, after the after this, the second action that happened, that is the doctor came. So, this is written in the simple past. Similarly, see, I can change this. Suppose if the if doctor, had, uh, doctor came first and then the patient died, then what would have happened? Then I would have written in this way. The doctor had come before the patient died. So see the patient died, the doctor had come. Use of had over here suggests that this action happened first, this action happened second and here it was just the opposite. So I hope past perfect tense is clear to you. Sometimes two incidents may not take place. Sometimes a moment of time may be given. If something has happened before a moment of time in the past, then also we can use past perfect tense. Like Raj had returned home before sunset yesterday. So yesterday an action happened, so past. Now a moment of time in past, sunset, it was a moment of time in past. How I understood it was a moment of time in past? With, because of the using the word yesterday. I understood that it is a moment of time in the past. Now, before the moment of time in the past, an action took place. Raj returned home. So, this we talked in, used in past perfect. And that's why we use had. Raj had returned home. We did not say Raj returned home. We are saying Raj had returned home. Okay. So, these are the two uh, instances where we use past perfect tense. Now, the last but not the least, past perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous. Now, what is past perfect continuous tense? Here also, two incidents of two actions. Suppose action A and action B. Now, in past perfect, we said that one action happened first, one action happens second. Here, the action that began first, it started and went on for the time being till the second and stand, till the second action began. So until the second action began, action A was continuing or was in progress. Action A was in progress till uh, action B began. That means the moment action B took place, action A finished or stopped happening. I hope you got to be confused. I will uh, help you out with a very easy example. Before that, let's go for the formation. Subject plus had plus been plus before plus object plus complement if any. Now let's let me write a sentence. That sentence will make it easy for you. Students had been shouting in the class until the teacher entered. So students have been shouting in the class until the teacher entered. So two incidents, students have been shouting and the teacher entered. Now, this action started so students, what were they doing? They were shouting in the class. So this action was in progress, was continuing. And it went on, went on, went on until the time that the teacher entered. The moment the teacher entered, the first incident ceased. That means stopped. So such kind of actions are regarded in 
past perfect continuous tense. So, two incidents which happened in the past. Out of that, the first incident started and went on for some time and it stopped only when the second incident began. Till the second incident began, the first incident was going on. So, when we will refer to such kind of incidents, when we will use past perfect continuous tense. And to refer to the second incident, we will use simple past tense. So, this is all about past tense. I hope you understood. Here we end our class today. Thank you.